the desert biome. What is commonly assumed as a hot, dry place with a sand dune there, a cactus there, and a fumbling weed there. But in truth, the desert is more than that. The desert is filled with many different kinds of animals and plants. The desert is teamed with beautiful and unique creatures and respectable and awesome plant life. In this video, we'll talk about what is a desert. And in many locations of the deserts around the world, we、we'll、also talk about the plants and animal lives of the deserts, the threats to the deserts, and how we can save the lives in the deserts. The desert biome, covering almost a fifth of the world's surface, is characteristic by a few points. The desert biome includes area where rainfall is less than 50 centimeters a year. The desert biome is divided into main two types of deserts: the hot and dry deserts, and the cold deserts. In a hot and dry desert, the seasons are generally warm throughout the year and very hot in the summer. The winter usually brings little rainfall. Temperature exhibits daily extreme because the atmosphere contains little humidity to block the sun rays. The temperature in a hot and dry desert can reach up to 50 degrees Celsius. Rainfall is usually very low and are concentrated in short bursts between long rainless periods. Evaporation rates regularly exceed rainfall rates. Sometimes rain starts falling and evaporates before reaching the ground. Soils are coarse texture, shallow, rocky, or gravelly with good drainage and have no subsurface water. Canopy tree plants are rare, and most plants are ground-hugging ones like shrubs. Animals are usually small and are extremely adapted to the dry climate. Most animals burrow under the ground. Now let's talk about the cold deserts. The Antarctica is a good example of a cold desert. Yes, the North and South Pole are both deserts. These deserts are characterized by cold winters with snowfall and high overall rainfall compared to the hot and dry ones. They occur mostly in the Antarctic, Greenland, and near Arctic rim. They have short, moist, and moderately warm summer with fairly long cold winter. The whole soil is heavy, silty, and salty. It contains alluvial sands where soil is relatively porous and drainage is good, so most of the salt has been leached out. The plants are widely small and scattered, with most of them deciduous leaves or spiky leaves. The animals are usually small mammals, but larger mammals still exist, and is more common compared to the hot and dry desert. Next, we're gonna discuss the locations of the many deserts around the world. So, as mentioned earlier, a fifth of the Earth's surface is covered by deserts, and these deserts are split in two groups: the hot deserts and the cold deserts. And unsurprisingly, the two largest deserts in the world are the polar deserts or the cold deserts. The Antarctic is the largest, and the Arctic is the second. But for a more familiar hot setting with sand dunes, the largest hot desert goes to the Sahara. The Sahara and most of the deserts in the world are located in an area between Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer, in an area known as the Tropic. Most deserts are located there is because the sun heat is at the largest, as demonstrated in this diagram. Now let's move on to the various plants and animals living in a desert. These are just few of the animals living in the deserts. Now we're going to explore on how these animals survive in a harsh environment of a desert. In the desert, water is scarce and temperatures extreme. Desert animals have to adapt specially to this harsh environment. The kangaroo rat is a desert animal which possess a unique characteristic that lets it survive in harsh desert environment. The kangaroo rat sleep during the day and creep out during the evening hours when it's cooler. The kangaroo rat shuts the entrance of its burrow with dirt during the morning and afternoon hour. This is to keep out the heat and unwanted visitor, at the same time keeping the moisture inside. 
They bury themselves in a cold burrow and sleep through the morning and afternoon, through the hottest part of the summer. This is called nocturnal. Many small desert animals use this adaption to survive the harsh environment of the desert. Not only heat is the problem, water is also a problem. The kangaroo rats and many other desert animals get its daily water from not what they drink, but from what they eat. The kangaroo rats get its water from the seeds they eat. And for another example, the roadrunners of the desert get its water from the prey they hunt. However, other larger desert animals use a different way to keep cool in the desert. For example, the jackrabbit. Notice its large air. The jackrabbit and other animals such as the desert fox have large airs that are filled with many tiny blood veins. Heat escapes through these veins which thus help cool their body. Another helpful feature is their thick coat. Instead of keeping it warm, these thick coat actually blocks out the sun. Now let's talk about how plants adapt to the desert. The cactus, a well-known desert plant uses many adaptation methods to survive in the desert. The cactus and many other desert plants is a succulent plant. A succulent plant is where it stores its water in its stems or roots. This is to conserve the precious water in a dry desert. The cactus also possess its famous spikes. These spikes offer the cactus two distinctive advantages. First, it deters any animals trying to eat the plants for its water. And second, the spike also prevent water loss during photosynthesis. The cactus also have a shallow but very widespread root. This is to catch any rainfall during its rare rain. But not all plants are like these. Some of the desert plants have long roots that reach all the way to underground water reservoir to get its water directly from there. However, most desert plants have oily residue cover on its body to prevent any more further water loss. And also, most desert plants bloom flower to encourage pollination for its spread of its species. After learning all these beautiful things about the desert, one can ask, is there a threat to it? And if there is, how can we save it? Due to the human activities in the desert, human activities are constantly damaging the desert biome and its wildlife. Take this sidewinder for example. The sidewinder and many other desert predators are constantly being hunted by humans. These hunting resulted a population boom for the plant-eating animals which thus depleted its already limited plant life. Not only hunting the desert wildlife, off-road vehicle recreation activity can also seriously damage a desert. An irresponsible usage of off-road vehicles can damage the fragile ecosystem in the desert. This can cause an irreparable damage to the desert habitat. Not only human recreation activity is damaging the desert, human industry in the desert are equally or even more damaged to the desert itself. Human industry that are damaging the desert including oil and gas production that may disrupt sensitive habitat nuclear waste or nuclear test dumped in the desert, overgrazing of animals in the rare oasis that may damage nearby desert wildlife, over irrigation in the desert that can lead to increase of salt level in the soil, or the potassium cyanide used in the gold mining of various deserts around the world. But how can we save the desert from all these threats? It's simple. All we have to do is to limit the hunt of desert animals and to limit the off-road vehicles on designated roads and trails. We can always find new ways to rotate crops to protect the fragile soil. We can also plant sand fiction bushes and trees. We can also plant leguminous plants which extract nitrogen from the air to fix it in the ground to restore soil fertility. We can put stronger regulation on nuclear testing and nuclear waste disposal in the desert. We can encourage and regulate industry that want to expand their business in the desert through mining, agriculture, or oil production. Nevertheless, for all these problems, the desert biome is an interesting biome that is filled with many unique plants and animals, and it's for a duty for us to protect this wonderful biome and let it be. Thank you for watching.